Hey, hey! The Texaco facility next door to Sunset House fired up the water cannons for our triumphant return to Grand Cayman. Or not. Leslie and I first bonded over flamingo tongues when we started dating, and our first dive trip together was to Sunset House, so this video has a special place in our hearts. On land, Sunset House is a fully functional dive resort. It has a restaurant and a beach bar with food, either of which are great for surface interval snacks or an after-dive meal. The small building behind the hotel is where all the dive operations are managed. They have a traditional pool, a sea pool, and a dock supporting boats that visit dive sites up and down the coast. Additionally, it has arguably the best camera shop on the island, which is run by Kathy Church, a world-famous underwater photographer. Grand Cayman's nature is on display throughout the grounds. Flowers in front represent the softer side, while volcanic rock tidal pools in the back embody the island's rugged side. Despite being fairly small and quite a distance from the sea, some even have small fish. Crabs and lizards can also be seen at the resort. But enough about the topside features. You came here to see what's below the surface, and there is certainly plenty to see. The snorkeling here is fantastic, and it starts with that spectacular sea pool. Even before we got wet, we saw this ocean triggerfish making the rounds by the entry ladder. Once we jumped in, we saw this sailor's choice, which isn't all that common either. The sea pool has a nice wide entry to the Caribbean Sea, so you can easily go out and explore the shallows if you like. Who knows? Perhaps a barracuda might be on the welcome wagon that day. Other activities for non-divers include swimming, kayaking, and paddle boarding. Going deeper, we came across six first-time captures. New island, new animals. Here's a preview of the new stuff coming up later in the video. Mermaid's wine glasses, a red snapping shrimp, brassy chub, indigo hamlets, common comet sea stars, and a bridled burfish. That said, this is the part where we typically ask for your subscription. Blah blah subscribe, blah blah like the video, etc. But instead, we'd like to encourage you to come dive Grand Cayman. The island just opened up after shutting down tourism for more than a year and a half. Incredibly, some dive shops have managed to keep operating, albeit with limited staff and hours. Unfortunately, some locations are no longer open. One of the sites we wanted to profile is not currently allowing recreational diving because they are temporarily operating as a quarantine facility. The dive community here could use your support, and hopefully this video will inspire a trip or two. On a more upbeat note, we do love reading your comments and suggestions. Christina recently asked if we could provide links to more information about our first-time captures. Great idea! Going forward, check those out in the description below each video. And Tom asked if we could add a couple of seconds to the informational sidebars, so we've increased the time on those as well. Thanks for the suggestions, guys. Smiley face. Sunset House is located at the southern end of Grand Cayman's western coast. Although there are shore diving sites around the island, most are concentrated on the west end, which is also where most people stay. As such, directions on Grand Cayman will start from the middle of West Bay Road in the Seven Mile Beach area. For Sunset House, take West Bay Road south. 
The road splits into two lanes just before Eastern Avenue, so get in the right lane and go straight. At that point, the road changes names to Church Street and winds along the coast. Continue on that for 1.7 miles. When you see the salmon-colored curb on the right, slow down and turn into the driveway just before the building with the same color. There are over 20 parking spots in back near the beach bar, some with shade and some without. The advantages of resort diving are many, and Sunset House offers quite a few. There is a small dive shack where you can rent equipment or arrange for a boat dive. Most divers set up their gear along either of the cement walls leading away from the dive shop. A few trees provide shade here as well. At the end of those walls are rinse tanks and a shower. Bathrooms are at the far end of the beach bar. There are a couple of entry options. Most shore diving is done from the sea pool, which is a short walk to the right from the gear setup area. You can take a giant stride, or, if you prefer, there is a metal ladder with four steps, plus a little rocky area at the bottom that you can use as another step. When you're ready, swim out through the gap in the seawall and start exploring. There are alternate entries directly in front of the seawall. Arrows point to safe giant stride locations that are deeper than the sea pool and are paired with longer ladders to climb back up. Note that the ladders are stored away during bad weather or excessive surge. No matter where you enter, the main part of the reef is a short swim over sandy paths between rock and algae covered shallows. Finally, not only does Sunset House run boat trips from their dock, other commercial and private boats pass through the area as well. We even came across a kayak in the sea pool. No matter where you are, make sure to pay attention whenever near the surface. Swimming out at 300 degrees northwest will put you on the reef, and 120 degrees southeast will get you back to shore. If this is your first time diving Sunset House, check out the site map on the seawall before jumping in. The underwater landscape starts out fairly plain, with small individual hard and soft corals dotting the bottom. Although occasionally, a more developed coral head will pop up. Gradually, the coral and sponges get larger and more dense. You will also see holes from time to time. The initial drop-off here is gradual, leveling off at a large sandy floor before it slopes down again. You have to swim well past the Nicholson to reach 100 feet. We did that, and here's what it looks like. Unfortunately, Grant Cayman has been experiencing a bout of stony coral tissue loss disease. Depending on when you see this video, it may be in remission or gone, but we wanted to share some of its devastating effects on parts of the reef. That said, Sunset House was in much better shape than some of the northern sites with healthy coral throughout the reef. Fortunately, there are plenty of other, more positive highlights at this dive site. We could probably do an entire video on just the sea pool. There are tons of cracks and crevices in the walls along the edge where little critters live and fish like to eat. Its sizable bottom has sand, rocky areas, and even a little debris, all of which attract different animals. The opening to the ocean is very big, allowing all sorts of animals to come and go, so you'll never know what you might see. In contrast to the live mermaid we saw on Bonaire, 
there is a nine foot tall mermaid statue straight out from the sea pool in about 60 feet of water at the bottom of a sand chute that cuts through the reef. Non-divers and anyone else can see a smaller replica next to the Sunset House pool. The mermaid looks out over a large flat area with more sand than reef. The edges are dotted with small oases full of coral, sponge, and fish. The middle is home to thousands of brown garden eels. A short swim in the direction of the mermaid's gaze lies the LCM David Nicholson wreck at 65 feet. Although it is more or less just a shell at this point, there is quite a bit of life, both growing on and swimming around it. If you start your dive from the alternate entry area, or feel like a longer swim from the sea pool, there is a very large anchor to the left of the dock area, sitting in 55 feet of water. That too has some life around it, as we saw a small school of bar jacks and a porcupine fish as well as the expected coral and sponge growth. As you make your way back from the reef, another area to explore is the rocky coastline. Sometimes the surge makes this difficult, however when it's calm, there are lots of interesting areas to investigate. Another reason we like this site so much is that there are a lot of sand chutes. In the shallows, they can be wide and flat but our favorites are long channel runs with well-defined walls several feet high. Swimming low through those is like flying through the canyons in Top Gun or pod racing on Tatooine. Epic. Sunset House greeted us with four first-time captures. This small school of brassy chub were swimming just outside the sea pool entrance. Tucked into the left side of this corkscrew anemone in the shallows was a red snapping shrimp. But my footage isn't nearly as good as Leslie's photo. Awesome shot. Also in the shallows were these two very small mermaid's wine glasses swaying in the surge. Much farther out, past the Nicholson, in 80 feet of water were a pair of indigo hamlets. We saw Tiger and Nassau groupers every few months in the ABC Islands, and it was nice to see them on Grand Cayman as well. Have you ever noticed long white threads coming out of a hole sometimes? Those are the tentacles of a spaghetti worm, and can grow as long as three feet. As far as activity goes, the best thing we caught was this conch taking a step from a very unique perspective. Underneath! To be sure, Sunset House did not disappoint. Here are some of the other terrific things we saw on our day dives.
Sunset House was just as amazing at night with a couple more first time captures. We saw not one, but two common comet sea stars, which were very nice. But the highlight of the night dive for me was this bridled burfish. Leslie's night was made early on with a squid in the shallows. And then we saw another in the sea pool just before exiting. Here are some more animals we saw while diving Sunset House after dark. Enjoy!